You wouldn't cut through a tree with a butter knife, and if you tried, you'd probably be there a while. And you know what, law school's the very same thing. If you don't have the right tools for the job, guess what, you're gonna be there a while. So in this video, we're gonna break down the top 10 best buys to make that law school journey a hell of a lot smoother. Guys, it's nice to have you back on the channel. If you're new here, my name's Taz and I'm a barrister based in the UK. And on this channel, we look at the challenges facing law students and explore the nature of our minds through materials, supplements, and practices to create happy, healthy, and optimized mental well-being. Here we have a dictaphone, and I can't tell you how much of a game changer this was for me. This probably secured me a couple grade boundaries here and there because at my university, not everything's recorded. Some of the most important lectures and seminars were all on this. And I managed throughout the year at the very important points to go back to those audios and take out the nuggets of wisdom and gold to get me that extra grade. So yes, for me, it's an absolute must buy. I'm gonna include all my product recommendations in the description below. So for a dictaphone, they normally range between 50 and 100 pounds yes you can find cheaper ones and more expensive ones but really you want to focus on the quality of the audio the product reviews and what is the brand's reputation for delivering quality audio like olympus and sony they're both solid bets also try and find one with a built-in usb it will make the job of transferring over to your laptop every time so much easier the two biggest benefits of the dictaphone are number one, you can focus on the lecture or the seminar and actually take that information in knowing that it's all being recorded. And the second one is for those important seminars where something of super importance is for your exam or that essay that you're writing, you have somewhere to go back and listen to and kind of extract that information and redirect it into what you're doing. Just make sure you ask your lecturer if they're okay with you using the dictaphone for GDPR reasons. This is arguably one of the best ones and it's otter.ai and what it is, it's a recording slash transcription service, which means you can go to lectures and seminars, hang back, click record and just watch the whole thing get written up for you. Unbelievable convenience. They have different packages. The good news for you is that yes, they do have a free package which gives you 600 transcription minutes free of charge. If you wanna to go to the one above that, it's the pro account. I believe it's like $9 for 6,000 transcription minutes a month, which is really good stuff. You can use Otter in conjunction with a dictaphone. If you're like me, your laptop has an awful microphone, it might not be as good as picking up the sound as this definitely will. So use them together, ensure that quality of sound. But the other benefit of Otter is like the dictaphone really, but even more so, you can just fully pay attention, not thinking that, okay, later I'm gonna to have to draft up those notes from the dictaphone because it's all being done for you. More and more articles and books are becoming digitally available every day, which makes this a must buy. This is an e-reader and there are a lot of different types of e-readers, but I would recommend definitely get an Amazon Kindle because remember that was their breakthrough product before they became this big online marketplace. So the product's actually been through a lot of different generations, it's developed significantly, and really it's top of the range stuff when it comes down to reading eBooks. This one is the Oasis, has a bit of a bigger screen and some buttons on the side to navigate through the book a little bit easier. So if you're an avid reader, this could be for you. The product itself ranges between 50 and 200 pounds. Really, I don't think it matters which one you get. If you can get the warm light feature, I think it's a really good feature to have because you can cut out the blue light, make evening reading more enjoyable and just more relaxing, which will help you get to bed easier. The e-reader has two big benefits in my view. The first is that as law students, we all know part of the job is carrying around these big nasty books all the time. But this cuts all that out, all your books in one place, which is like paper thin. So it's a huge benefit to have. And the second is this. So I use a platform called Notion to organize everything I do. I organize my life on that platform thanks to August Bradley. I followed his PPV system. I'll get into that in another video, but I'll say this. You can use an integration app called Readwise and what that allows you to do is synchronize your e-reader with Notion. So any notes that you make, anything that you highlight you think is relevant in a law book, it's just automatically going to that database and that as a law student can save you so much time. Earplugs, simple but really effective. They're only roughly four pound on Amazon 
And we all know, even when you're in the quiet area in the library, there's so many noisy people in there. And these basically just cut out all the noise, mute everything, and let you focus on the work at hand. Can we appreciate the commitment of bringing this in here? So this is a HP printer, and whichever printer you get, Try and get one with a built-in scanner. It's gonna make your life so much easier. I'm gonna make it really easy for you. There are two types of printers. There's ink printers or there's laser jet printers. Now, one of them is more expensive to buy, normally the laser jet, but the actual running costs tend to be cheaper than the ink printer, which is cheaper to buy, but the running costs can be more expensive. When you're comparing printers, there's three things you really wanna be looking for. What's the printing cost, i.e. what's it costing you per page to print? Number two is, what is the speed at which it's printing? Not so important, but equally, you don't wanna be there all night trying to print something off. And number three, what's the quality of that print? Ink printers are roughly around 50 pound, laser jet starting from around roughly 130 pound. What matters here is because printers are notorious for breaking and having issues, go with a good brand, get something reliable that it doesn't need fixing every other week and it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Printing will clean out your wallet faster than anything if you let it, believe that, trust me. I'll tell you this, bar school, I spent 350 quid in one session to print off my revision material. So, take my advice on this. I didn't buy a printer till after the fact. If I look at what I probably spent over the course of university, it's north of a grand. So do yourself a favor, invest early and save some money. You need to back up everything you do at university. That just goes without saying. So ideally you want to have a cloud backup and an external hard drive backup. You could probably get away with using the free 15 gigabytes that Google Drive give you, just have the essential stuff that you're working on in there as the first point of call, and use the external backup as the safety net in case anything goes wrong on the drive, which you shouldn't really have to worry about, but it's better to have something and not need it than need it and not have it. External hard drives are between 20 and 50 pounds, I would recommend get a terabyte. You don't wanna be worried about space. You wanna use it, fill it up as you please without worrying about anything. Make sure the Google Drive is your workspace and you're doing everything through that drive so that it's all backed up. I remember second year university, nothing was backed up. Smoke started coming out of the vents of my laptop. It was on fire and I took it to the IT guy and he said, this is dead as a dodo. I couldn't believe it, but I think any university student you meet will have a similar story to tell. Don't let it be you. Final thing to say on the external hard drive is that I will tend to do a manual backup from Google Drive onto that hard drive around every two weeks. And the final warning is, leave the hard drive at home, don't take it around with you. I've lost mine before, all my data's been on there in the hands of strangers, I've been like, oh my God. You don't want that to be you either. So if you can, leave it at home and try and encrypt your data on that hard drive so that if it does fall into the wrong hands, people can't access it. I would say Grammarly is a lawyer's best friend. Not only because it's free, but also it ensures just that there's always a safety net there in terms of your spelling and grammar, and it really does help you to avoid those delivery mistakes when you're writing. As a lawyer, you get judged by your command of the English language. You can't afford to be making spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. So that's the beauty of Grammarly. It integrates with Google Chrome, analyzes your emails, it analyzes your web browser, anything you're typing through Microsoft Word, whatever it is, it's always there. So that means if you're not having enough sleep, you're up late night doing an essay or something, it's there correcting you 24 seven, making sure you don't look silly. Everything I have has a case. So this is a portable battery bank and you've got all your essential cables and plug there in case you need it. They are normally between 20 and 50 pounds. I think the important things is with power banks is that it has the USB ports or whatever ports it is that you use and enough of them so that you can charge multiple things at once and that the actual milliampere, which is how much power it stores, is quite high because you don't want to be charging it every other day. So I would recommend 25,000 plus. I've got so much love for power banks. As a law student, you're always in and out of the library. Sometimes you just don't know where you're heading. You end up in a situation and you look down and your phone's dead. You're like, but with the power bank, you just pull a cable out your rucksack, stick your phone in and you're good to go. You got juice. The star of the show, the thermal flask. It might even save you more money than the printer, but whatever you do, make sure you get one with a lid. Because before I bought this, every time I'd use the old flask, which didn't have the lid, I'd be walking a mile to get one just so I could have my coffee. Now they're around about 20 pounds, but as a law student, you've got a coffee or tea running through your veins. 
So you don't want to get caught in the trap of paying for a hot drink once, twice a day, six pound a day. That's just a soul crushing amount of money by the end of the week. So don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to your bank account. Get one of these. Thank me later. Finally, I'm going to say just a quick note on laptops. Obviously, you need a laptop for university. I'm not even going to give it more than that, other than to say this. I've had four laptops at university. I've had the displeasure of Adele, and I briefly had a Mac for a period of time. And I appreciate that not every student is in the financial position to afford a Mac. I definitely wasn't, but I have went through the Dells, the HPs, everything just to save money, and it ended up being the biggest headache in the world. And compare all those laptops to a 2013 Mac that I was given, the Mac was head and shoulders above the rest. It was reliable. It just did the business every time. So if you can, I would always go the Mac route. Guys, thanks for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed that one. And as always, please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, then make sure to like and subscribe. It makes a massive difference. And other than that, guys, you know what it is. I'll see you at the next one.